Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll be looking at arrays. So till now, we have been working with programs where we already knew the number of inputs, right? So we knew the space required for our programs to work and all the stuff. So let's consider a program where we don't know how many inputs we need to store. So something like this. This is a code snippet, which is basically taking in records, uh, let's say student records. So every student has a name and age and then the user gets to enter how many records he wants to enter and then we are going to take in the records. Now if you run this program uh, you can see that the program doesn't crash right. So if I say I want to enter three records it's going to take in three records so A1, B2, C3. So you can see that the records are taken successfully but if you look at this more closely you see that those records are not getting saved anywhere right those things are just getting overwritten every time now there is no way that we know how many records the user is going to enter right it completely depends on the user so how are we actually going to store all the records we can only store the last record in this way but all the previous records are getting lost right so how can we store all the data so that no data is lost and also we don't limit the number of records and the user gets to enter as many records as he wants. So it turns out that you cannot define the number of variables or no, the space you want at runtime but you can define a collection of space in runtime. So let me illustrate to you what I mean. So let's say the you user wants to enter some number of records let's say uh, five records so uh, if you consider this white space as the me computer's memory so what we will be effectively doing is we will be creating collections of variables so we have two variables over here right so we have one name and then you have an age right so what you will be doing is Instead of creating different variables like name1, name2 and so on, we will be creating a collection of variables, something like this. And then inside this collection, what we will be doing is we will be separating this collection. I mean, we will be creating partitions inside this collection. So let's say the user wants to enter five records. So what we do is we create a collection and then make five partitions into it. So you have five partitions over here. So all of them are obviously they are of the same size and then age also you will be giving five partitions so like this right so now what happens is once the user gets to enter the records you will be entering into that particular area which is assigned for every particular record so let's say for the first record you enter the data into the first box and then for the second record you enter it into the second partition for the third record you enter it in the third partition so, and so on. So this particular kind of uh, process you will continue so that you can enter all the records and then you can also access these records by just accessing the partitions right. So this is how arrays work. Well arrays literally mean collection of objects and that is what it means in programming too. So what you are basically doing is instead of creating n number of variables you will just create this memory space which is capable of holding n number of variables and then create partitions into it. So once you create partitions you can add data into it and then it, you can retrieve it, you can perform operations on it just like variables. So basically you can think of array as a collection of variables but it's not actually a collection of variables it's just a collection of memory. So if you take this particular array, if you take the size of this particular array you will see that it is nothing but the number of elements inside it so in this case 5 into the size of each element inside this so the size of each integer is 4 bytes so the size of this particular array is going to be 20 bytes so you can see that array is nothing but just a collection of memory or you can say collection of variables and then you can add and retrieve it as you like so let's see how to implement this particular ideology in programming so to implement an array what you need to do is you need to declare an array so how do we declare an array in C++ we don't have to do anything we just need to put square brackets 
so that this particular variable is addressed as an array by the compiler and then inside this particular brackets you need to specify the number of items the array should be capable of holding so in our case we are going to get the number of records right so if you give n records you are going to have n names and n ages so the size of our array is nothing but the number of records right so what you do is you just mention the size inside the square brackets so for the age too you are going to do the same thing so age records and then over here what we'll be doing is instead of name we'll be accessing the partition now how do we access the partition of an array so for accessing the ith partition or the ith segment of the array or you can say the ith variable which is stored inside the collection you need to access it as the name of the array so array name and then inside a pair of square brackets you need to specify the index where this particular index is nothing but i minus 1 so let's say you want to access the first partition of the array so for the first partition you need to give index as i minus 1 which is equal to 0 so for the second one you need to give the index as 1 and so on so for the nth partition you will be effectively giving n minus 1 as your index so that is why if you remember I generally start loops from 0 because uh, it it becomes easier to work with arrays if you are working with uh, loops which are starting from 0 because of this particular rule because the index of an array starts from 0 so I don't have to subtract 1 from the counter every time I can directly in access the partition by just calling the counter now to access that particular partition you don't have to do anything you just need to put the square bracket over here and then access the partition so since I'm using a counter over here I'm directly going to access it by the counter and the same thing over here too right now how do I retrieve it well retrieving also follows the same rule so you need to uh, pass the array's name and then the index which is nothing but i minus 1 if you want to access the ith partition so uh, let's say we ask the user to retrieve some record let's say which record or do you want to retrieve and then the user enters some record so let's say nth record so he wants to retrieve the nth record so we'll be getting the nth record as our input and then what you need to do is you just need to access the nth record as nth minus 1 it's the same rule and then for the name and then that goes same for the age too so you just need to access it by n minus 1 and then if you run it so let me just put the n line over here so here you can see that uh, if i enter some records let's say a1 b2 c3 and then if i want to retrieve the second record you see that the name is b and then the age is 2 so that's how arrays work as a recap arrays are nothing but a collection of memory or you can say a collection of variables where you can store and retrieve variables as you wish so now what all variations can you do with an array well it turns out that you not only can store collection of variables but you can store collections of collections too so that is basically the dimensions of an array so dimension basically means collection of collections so basically if I am saying that an array is one dimension so if I say that array is one dimension it basically means this thing that it it holds a collection now if I say that an array is two dimension then what it means is it holds a collection of collections so how do we define this we just put another pair of square brackets over here and then define the second dimension so this is nothing but a matrix if you observe so if you are familiar with matrices you have some array of numbers right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so if you observe this this whole thing is a collection and three such collections form this particular matrix so how can you define this you can just define this as a 3 cross 3 array right so if you uh, say this particular thing is a matrix so let's say this is matrix m which is equal to this thing so if this particular matrix is this one then it is nothing but a 3 cross 3 matrix right and the way it is defined in the memory is you have this particular collection where inside each collection you have three 
items so one two three is one collection four five six is another collection and then seven eight nine is another collection and all three form the overall collection so this is how your variable mat is actually defined in the memory well you don't have to always take an input inside an array from the user you can even define the inputs so how do we define it well to define inputs you just need to put a pair of curly braces and then define your data so let me just clear this and we'll take some generic examples so let's say our array is uh, a 3 cross 3 array so let's just define that matrix which we talked about so how do we define this first we find an overall collection and inside this collection there are going to be three collections so one collection is one two three and then you have the second collection as four five six and then the third collection as seven eight nine so this overall makes three by three matrix so if you want to access it you can access it using loops so for int i equal to zero i is less than three i plus plus and then you need to run another loop for accessing the inner collection so for int j equal to zero j is less than three j plus plus you can just show that element so a of i comma j right let us just give a space over here and then a new line after so that it looks like a matrix now if i run this oh i forgot to put a comma over here yeah so here you can see how the three cross three matrix is defined well you can have collections of collections of collections so that is basically a three dimensional array you can go up to any dimension in an array there is no limit to that. you can have as many collections of collections and it completely depends upon your problem so mostly we tend to use this kind of collection which is a matrix and then the single dimensional array which is nothing but just a collection of data well another point to note that is these collections cannot contain mixed data that is you cannot have both integers and strings in one array so in an array what happens is that particular array will contain data or will contain a collection of data of only that particular data type you cannot change the data type or you cannot have mixed data inside one particular collection so that's how you work with arrays in C++ you can also pass in arrays to a function but always arrays will be passed as a reference not as a value so if I create a function over here let's say in func um, which just takes in the array so int a and then you need not define the dimensions if it's just a single dimension you can just leave it as a square bridge and if it is multi-dimensional then you need to define the last dimension of the array so let's say you are passing a three-dimensional array so then you need to define the last dimension which is the third dimension compulsorily uh, you cannot omit this dimension and if you are passing this particular array which is a two dimensional array you need to pass the second dimension which is three you can leave this or you can define this it really doesn't matter but if you are passing some array which is not single dimensional then you need to pass the last dimension of that particular array so now uh, let us just define this function let's say uh, we don't have to do anything we just uh, uh, print the first element of the array so a is 0 0 this is the first element and then what we'll do is we will change that element so we'll change a 0 0 equal to 5 right and then uh, I'll just return uh, some things let's say return. we'll skip this return we'll just make this void so this is a void function right now if I call this function so if I just say func and then pass in a and then we when print the first element after running this particular function so let's just put end lines over here so that we can differentiate between the output so one over here and then one over here and now if I run this particular program you will see that the value of array 0 0 was 1 which is nothing but this particular element and then if I change that value over here I could change it over here too so in the main thing also it changed so 
uh, that explains that arrays are not passed by value but they are passed by reference so arrays don't get copied when you pass them to a function but they are changed in the memory itself so what you are essentially doing is you are just passing a pointer we will be discussing pointer at a later stage but uh, what pointers basically mean is they are nothing but those are variables which carry addresses we will discuss more about pointers at a later stage but for now this is how we use arrays in C++ and in the next video uh, we will make our first programming project right so it is going to be a very small project we will try to understand all the concepts which we learned till now it's going to be a really fun project and you can share with your friends too so looking forward for that particular project and see you in the next video till then happy coding